up, we're going to be looking again at the alkanes. We are going to define what we mean to be a homologous series. We're going to talk about isomers, the structural ones. We're going to draw them, hopefully, and give all the other alkanes a name. So look at actually how to name an alkane when you don't know what's going on. So homologous series. These are a group of compounds, similar general formula, alkanes have it, similar chemical properties, alkanes have it, don't forget they do not dissolve in polar substances. Um, the method of PrEP is the same for all alkanes, yeah? Showing graduation in physical properties, what does that mean? Well, we've already discussed that. We've talked about the idea, as the carbon chain increases as does boiling point that's what we mean by a graduation in physical properties and with each member differing from the previous by a ch2 unit well we've discussed this again already as we go from butte to pent we add a extra carbon and for every extra carbon we add we add two hydrogens now looking to the left hand side here we're going to discuss the difference between these two Chemical structures. So, if we count the carbons on the left-hand side, we'd have four, and hydrogens, we'd have 10, C4H10. If you do the same on the right-hand side, you'd actually say, well, it's C4H10, but there's a difference between how you see them visually. Although the chemical formulae is the same, there is a difference in their structure. So we would call these guys structural isomers. Same molecular formulae, but different structural formulae. Again, that's a definition you need to know. What's going on here? Well, they're still both C4H10, but their names are different. We know on the left-hand side that the longest carbon chain is four. We count them in a row, C4. That means our prefix is butte. It's all the single bonds, meaning our suffix is ane. So we do have butane. But on the right-hand side, we've got something very different. Um, sorry about that. We have a situation where our longest carbon chain, again, counting from whatever carbon, can only be three. So we have a probe. The carbons are connected by single bonds, therefore ane. We have a propane. But we also have a substituent group, which is the CH3. Now we've discussed this before in class, the idea of a CH3 being added on to a chain is a methyl or a methyl group. So in this case, we don't have a butane, we have propane. And we have, on carbon number two, we have a methyl group. So this would be 2-methylpropane. Just again, if you're not sure, draw them out. Highlight the longest carbon chain. Notice if there's any substituents. Notice that in this case, it's a CH3. In some cases, it could be C2H5, which is an ethyl group. And we name that appropriately. Now, draw the structural isomers of c 5 H12. Again, guys, you know that C5 means pent. If we were to draw them all in a straight line, add our hydrogens on, we would have our pentane. Very simple. But there are other arrangements that we can draw. We can remove a terminal carbon, so a CH3, and we can place it in another place. For example, let's have a look now. In the middle. 2-methyl-butane. The longest carbon chain is 4, meaning but. All single bonds, meaning ane. We have substituent group, the CH3 stuck on there, and it's on the second carbon. Therefore, 2-methyl-butane. Now, is there another thing we can do with this? Of course there is. We can remove, again, a terminal CH3 at the end and place that in another position, we would get 2,2-dimethylpropane. Two, Longest carbon chain is 3, meaning prop. All the single bonds, ane, propane. That is our parent chain. Notice that on carbon 2, 
you have a CH3 group at the top and a CH3 group at the bottom, but it is their substituents. So we would call it 2,2-dimethylpropane. Again, I'd love you to draw this out, go through it, make sure you've highlighted your longest chain and then circle with a different colour each of your substituents so you know what you're talking about and label them both methyl groups. Notice that it's dimethyl, meaning two methyl groups. So how do we go about naming them? Well, we've kind of had an introduction. We figure out the longest carbon chain. It has to be continuous. We name the carbon chain starting from the end that gives the substituent the lowest number. Look, this can be from right to left or left to right. It does not matter. But once the substituent on the carbon chain is given the lowest possible number, then we just give the position and write the name of it. Have a look here. Okay, so homologous series, structural isomers, same chemical formulae, but different arrangement in space. Structural isomers for butane. So there's butane, and then there is our 2-methylpropane. And then we'd have our structural isomers for pentane. And go through the worksheets and just double check that you are naming them sufficiently, okay?